Hey guys, Corey here at Free Play. We are at the secret lab right here. We're about to do a quick, like totally behind the scenes tour. It's about to storm like crazy, so we better get inside. Let's go guys. All right, so the first thing you have to know about the secret lab is, even though it's gonna look kind of like a wreck, this was our attempt to make an amazing corporate office. So we have two Sony PVM Trinitrons, another Trinitron, a weird Panasonic I accidentally bought, but it came with Star Wars Episode One on VHS. Really cool. Um, we, honestly, we don't get enough time to spend here with our consoles. We have mostly games that we bought for special events and stuff like that, but this next spring we have the biggest fighting game convention, like, Retro fighting game convention ever. Rare, really, really cool stuff. This is kind of like a preview if you can see it. Um, this is our lobby. We've got really cool artwork. We have, I think, something like 45 or 50 uh, original game posters that we have framed. We've got a really cool guy out of England that made this Rolling Thunder art piece over here. We have right here, nothing. This is supposed to be a big free play logo. We haven't bought it yet. We're still kind of new. This is the amazing Julie's desk. We're gonna peek in here really quick. This is like planning. Y'all are about to get like, y'all are about to see stuff y'all probably shouldn't see. This is totally like, where this is our war room. It has nothing very interesting for YouTube, but a lot of stuff that's really interesting to me. And it has, if you watch the channel eight feature on Free Play Richardson the very first day, my mother, without my permission at all, hung this guy, we call him Fat Boy. Hung him up, put him up, and we still have him. We can't even get rid of him. We love him too much now. Um, and now he haunts the lab. Here he is in all his glory. All right, so here is what you, the best way to know that you're in like a crazy good arcade lab. Even in our planning room floor, we've got arcade boards everywhere. So we're gonna walk in here. We got like files, boring stuff, and also a ton of arcade PCBs. Uh, and these are just, we use these old pizza boxes as our, we don't actually eat the pizza, we buy them fresh. It's not all greasy. Um, but these are all working, beautiful PCBs. I mean, super rare stuff, R-Type, Gaia Crusaders. I mean, terrible stuff, Street Fighter EX2. Uh, of working Bagman, DJ Boy from Weird Game Month, Raiden Fighters 2, great game. Tiger Road, Mr. Dude's Wild Ride, Donkey Kong Jr., Cowboys and Mubesa. I mean, uh, fresh Donkey Kong, Super Puzzle Bubble, E-Swat, all sorts of stuff, it's really hard. We have, Two splatter houses, which is now considered one of the rarest JAMA PCBs and one of the most sought after, period. Tech Romancer, Time Killers, a bunch of goofy stuff. Some CPS2 boards that we have here. Uh, it's, I mean, this is a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of our PCB collection, but uh, it, it's just really, really cool to work at a place that you walk through and that's what exists. So you got boring stuff, coffee or refrigerator that no one uses because we got the cool kind of beverage fridge at the front. All right, so we walk to the back where we start to get to kind of the super interesting stuff. We've got a Devastators poster here. Now, what's kind of interesting here is Devastators has never been on the free play floor. That was the very first arcade I bought. If you watched all of our materials, you know that. Eventually, I'm gonna put it out. What's really cool is we have a dedicated Devastators, which is really rare. It's also the same cabinet as a dedicated Contra. We're gonna do like a side-by-side -side release with both games in the same cabinet. Really cool. Uh, this used to be the monitor room. We've cleared it out mostly. These are just spare Neo Geo stuff. Some really cool monitors, some really uh, rare monitors, PGMs, I mean CPS2s. It's really amazing because when I was coming up in the arcade world, I envisioned a place like this and we're in it now and it's just so, so very cool. All right, so now we're gonna walk to kind of the, the warehouse proper. Over here, you'll see a tech desk. If you look back there, it's just a ton of parts and other stuff that we use to, to kind of survive the day-to-day -day operations. We're gonna walk over here. This is a space fiber cocktail. It's beautiful and it works. And the techs, man, they're using it as storage. Look at all these PCBs. These are all PCBs that are close to working that need something minor before they'll get out. And you're gonna keep walking. You'll see some guns, some old stuff. This is like, hundreds and hundreds of PCBs just stacked in here. Um, and it, it, it's kind of weird to operate in this world where sometimes it's easier for us to just replace a PCB, throw it on the stack, get to it. Some of the stuff is just auction boxes that we're still trying to go through and it takes forever. You'll see auction price tags on here, uh, shotguns, 
Is this, I think this is, uh, what is it? The, when they, Lethal Enforcers 2, when they went to the, uh, revolver gun style. All right, so we've got an Atari Super Breakout. This started out as an auction piece. It had an LCD on a Super Breakout. We have now sourced a uh, beautiful uh, CRT, black and white. Should be coming to free play soon. Strikers 1945, used to be at uh, free play Richardson. Blew up the monitor, we haven't fixed it yet. Bagman, or La Bagman, French game. Totally broken. We've been working on it for like two years. It is difficult. This is really cool. Uh, in the mid 90s, they released a Galaga Xevious Mappy multi-board, licensed and everything. And part of the release was to have the original programmers come back and re-envision Galaga, Xevious, and Mappy. And so this actually has, we haven't done anything with it, but this has the revised versions of all of them, the updated 90s versions. We're still trying to figure out what to do with it, but they're really, really cool, especially for Xevious, which gets kind of dated really fast. This version of Xevious is amazing. All right, so as I move away, some of the old podcast chairs, we've got a Golden Axe, much requested game. This one's basically ready. Uh, I hope, I hope, uh, before the end of the year, you see this out at one of our arcades. Over there at Gravitar, we've done a game of the week on Gravitar, which I think is an amazing game, but it's been really, really hard to keep on the floor because it's so brutally difficult. Uh, so if you see a bunch of Gravitars during this episode, though we love the game, a lot of them are being harvested for their uh, original Atari Volcanoes. There's 6100 mon Wells Gardner monitors uh, that can go into Tempest, for example, Black Widow, for example. All these really, really good games that uh, unfortunately are, are a little better than Gravatar. This is a stand-up Warlords, needs some work. Uh, we, you'll see a uh, Cocktail Warlords coming up. That's the one we're going to try to get back out. But this is a dedicated stand-up Warlords that just uh, hasn't made it out yet. Needs a lot of work. Here's something that has been requested that we have not yet brought out that we just finally fixed all the way Sega Afterburner. I believe this is running the sequel board set, which used the exact same control scheme. Beautiful game, amazing. But just like all of the Sega racers, drivers, or uh, flyers of the era, this beautiful control will get destroyed at free play. So if we bring it out, give it a month, give it two, someone's gonna hang on this and just destroy the whole thing. All right, you'll see another one of these later, maybe two or more. War Final Assault, a terrible single player game that is amazing multiplayer. You can link up to four of these cabs. Atari made it totally like to take on the first person shooter world. And it is, it is not very good. One player, it's okay two player. Four players is the goal. We'll link them all together, put them in free play Arlington. It's gonna be really cool. Uh, an Arabian. This is, I mean, this is kind of a rare game. It's a, also an awesome game. There is no excuse for not putting this out yet, but it's a little obscure. We don't have enough requests for it. We've been working on it since we purchased it almost a year ago, and uh, we're totally stoked because that's going to come out soon. Another pretty rare game, especially in its original format. This is the side by side Play Choice 10. Uh, or side-by-side -side versus cabinet that is the original four-player tennis. It needs a ton of work still, but this is it. If we don't have any year, go ahead and send me an email and say, where the heck is that cabinet? All right, so we were talking earlier about Gravitar. This is Gravitar side art, but this is a conversion Black Widow. Uh, Robotron style vector, amazing game. Um, again, we buy every 6100 monitor, Wells Gardner Vect, color vector that we can get our hands on. This is one of them. Uh, it's working, it's great, uh, but honestly, we're, we're having some issues getting traction with Gravatar, Black Widow, and Space Tool. All the same style cabinet, all really good games, but like the general population has not yet made the connection. Okay, and behind me, this is about to like irritate a million people. This is a race driving. It works great. It is perfect. Um, we need to clean it up a little bit. Here's why it's not out. Because the general population doesn't know how to drive a real stick shift. This is a game that famously has a real clutch. You're driving on a ridiculous 3D track. It's beautiful, but no one knows how to use a clutch. It, every arcade it's ever been in, it was the least played, but most loved game. Um, so we're still working on it. We're still trying to figure out how to introduce this, this to the public and get people to love it. Um, we haven't cleaned it up yet. We've had it for years. 
We have a hard drive and PCB that we can swap in, which is the sequel. Uh, uses the exact same connectors, exact same manual transmission. It's a great game, but maybe it won't make it to free play. We don't know. And then right next to it, another whole group of people that's really upset. This is a completely hidden, completely working 720. This is one of our prototypes as we try to figure out how to make the uh, the control scheme uh, for 720 uses a really, really cool joystick that is brutal to continue to operate in a uh, free play environment and especially to keep it how it's supposed to be. How it's like going to give you the full 360 degree motion. Most arcades have kind of punted. They've tried to convert it. We're not about that. So this is a 720 that is not yet out. But hopefully in the near future, we have a 720 for you to play. This right here, really cool. We'll walk around, we'll check it out. This is a launch game for Freeplay Richardson that we never expected to have any issues with. But if we uh, were really, really knowledgeable about Chihiro PCBs and Chihiro motherboards, we would have known this was coming. They are brutal to keep running. OutRun 2 is probably my favorite all-time racing game. This was out on launch. We have uh, mined probably seven or eight Chihiro PCBs for it uh, to keep it going. This one's still working. It has a few little glitches, but we don't really know what to do because in the real world, we can't keep it running. Uh, House of the Dead 3 had the same issue. It's a Chihiro PCB. Brutal. Um, so we'll, we're still figuring it out, but this one, this is my favorite racing game ever. It's got original free play stickers. This is beautiful. Hopefully we get it out soon. Oh wow. So like during this whole walkthrough, we're just gonna irritate people because this is one of I think three tournament cyberballs in this room right now. Uh, tournament cyberball has just wrecked us. We have, um, every time we put it out, something that was wrong. And what's kind of interesting is it's not the same thing that's going wrong, but we have not been able to keep these on the floor. Uh, I would expect, given that we have four or five, and as you watch this series, we're gonna try to walk through every single warehouse that Freeplay owns. Hopefully, we will be able to bring all of these games together and give Tournament Cyberball a true, proper Freeplay release. Because it's been out before, but it never lasts very long. And we haven't figured out why. All right, behind it, that's some fighting game Tekken. Uh, I wouldn't worry too much about it. It's probably been harvested for its controls. Maybe it's a uh, harness. You've got a Tekken 4, Tekken 3. Both work, but aren't really quite there. And, and in general, we found that like Tekken Tag, that's the popular Tekken. Tekken 3 and 4, they have, there are certainly fans of the game, but if they can have Tekken Tag or Tekken Tag 2, they'd much prefer to have those. I mean, a beautiful ice cold beer. Uh, we're currently working on this. This is the problem with going through the lab. All of these are works in progress, but we keep having things that break day-to-day -day operations. So this is an ice cold beer in unbelievable shape. You won't find a side that's quite that good, I don't think, in the world. We need to redo the control panel, redo a couple little small parts of the PCB. It'll be out. So this one's pretty embarrassing. Jungle King. We actually have three Jungle King PCBs all working. Uh, except for the one that's in this cabinet. And before this cabinet could get on the floor, uh, it was out on the floor. It was coming to Let's Play. Before we get to Let's Play, the PCB started to get really, really glitchy. And then the monitor was a perfect replacement for another title game. We need to borrowing the monitor. We need a new monitor in this. We should have it up soon, but no one's really requested it. Guys, if y'all like Jungle King, tell us. We'll get it back out. Oh, jeez. I'm about to get in a lot of trouble here. If you've watched the Game of the Weeks, you know this power drift is supposed to be in some beautiful guy's garage or some homeowner, and he's enjoying that full motion. Go to watch that Game of the Week. It was an amazing Game of the Week. Um, what we found out is these seven or 800 pounds that this weighs, uh, couldn't get into the guy's truck, couldn't get to his garage. We're still trying to find the right home for it. It's not at free play. You can watch the Game of the Week to know why. Um, we still have it. Maybe I'll just keep playing it. Maybe I'll just love it forever. But hopefully someone that's watching this says, hey, I want a power drift and I live about a block away from the lab. If you're in Richardson, Texas and you want a power drift, let me know. Actually, email Richard at Richard at FreePlayInc.com. Tell them you want it and we'll see if we can work it out. All right. So ignoring this beautiful full motion power drift, we have 
another ice cold beer. And uh, the truth is we should have these out. And we've been trying so hard to get them out, but ice cold beer, if you know anything about it, it's a vertical pinball. We have one at Free Play Richardson and getting them out and getting them to stay out is a whole nother, whole nother ball game. So we have a beautiful ice cold beer here, original glass that looks amazing. Uh, no side art needs to be replaced, but it's all it's all of these that you're about to see. They're all great games. They're just works in progress. Uh, so here we have a California Speed. This has actually been on the floor for about a day. Um, it's in a cruising cab. You can see the cruising buttons right here. It's a great game. Uh, we were going to release California Speed linked with another California Speed, and just for whatever reason, it didn't happen. Um, so we got to figure out what we're going to do, when we're going to be able to get it out. But we've built two of these now. Uh, and I think California Speed is actually a really fun game. It's a little goofy, a little silly, but it's one of the ones we've been trying to get out and we have a link for this. Uh, next to it, the National Video Game Museum recently released, and I think uh, another arcade or two. Congo Bongo has been popular lately. We've had a working Congo Bongo forever. Uh, unfortunately, the previous operator that had this one, uh, and you might be able to look in here, just kind of stuck a monitor on there that was not a CRT and what you don't see that we've already cleaned off was the gobs and gobs of hot glue that he was using to hold an LCD monitor in here. We need to put a CRT in here, we will soon. Uh, it's otherwise ready to go. All right, and it's just like tragedy after tragedy in here. This is Darkstalkers Revenge, Night Warriors. Uh, it's working fine, except the monitor went out. As we were taking out, you'll see we've borrowed some buttons. We had a cool color scheme set up. We had a nice free play sticker. This was going to some event. Fortunately, it never made it, and we had to pull it off the floor. We haven't worked on it yet, but this is a Darkstalkers 2 cabinet that we hope to get out. Uh, maybe not in this video, but as we go through our warehouses, another thing you'll see that I clearly love is Baby Pac-Man. And Baby Pac-Man, we need every part that we can get. Um, we have one right now, you can go play it in Freeplay Richardson, and then you'll see a bunch of busted old Baby Pac-Man cabs. That's what it takes to get the parts to run it. It's difficult. Uh, and speaking of games that we love that we can't get out on the floor right now, here is a, a very nice punch out. We need to finish it. Uh, we have a super punch out right now, I believe at Arlington. It's either regular or super. Uh, great game. We just have to get it out on the floor. But that's what we're doing. We're walking through a warehouse. These are things that we're working on. There, right there, is another tournament cyberball next to a Rolling Thunder. Both incredible games. Both, I mean, Rolling Thunder is currently at Arlington. It, it kind of fluctuates in and out because it's not the most loved. It is tech, I mean, it was my original favorite game. Crystal Castles maybe passed it up, but Rolling Thunder is amazing. All right, so here's a total piece of free play history that I for forgot about completely. This is the original free play menu. Um, and what's really, really sad is someone worked, I mean, for more than a couple days, making sure all these letters were in there. You have to snap them in. It is not fun. Um, and this was what was going to be the original menu when we opened. We couldn't find a good place to mount it. And ultimately, it ended up just kind of falling by the wayside. But this is still mostly our menu. But this was what was supposed to be the original opening menu for Free Play uh, Richardson about three years ago. Really cool, really awesome piece of history and I feel so bad for the employee that just killed their fingers getting all of those things pushed in because they are not fun. All right, so we're gonna walk around here. Oh, I mean, this is a Miss Pack cocktail. It may or may not be working, but you can see all sorts of stuff. We got power supplies all over it. This is the top of a CPS2. Uh, here's a ROM burner and various, uh, Coin boxes, I mean, complete coin systems. This is a rejuvenator. God only knows what's in there. That is a, you know, a drill press. It is, I mean, and then it's all right next to a Bermuda Triangle. And so you only have so many of the game, of the uh, the octagon or the, the rotating joysticks, which like Heavy Barrel really made fa famous. Bermuda tri Triangle is probably the rarest. And we've been trying to get this out for a while. The biggest problem is these these joysticks kind of suck and they're so hard to get working how we want them to. But I really think this will be out this year. If it's not, again, email Richard at freeplayinc.com. Uh, so just looking at this corner is about to irritate a ton of people. This whole, this whole walkthrough is about irritating people apparently. This is a Periscope Battle Zone. 
a Paperboy. This one was out at Free Play Richardson. It had a minor issue. We brought it back to work on, and it's had minor issue after minor issue. Right now, it's just trying to get the power. So Paperboy famously uses two power supplies. Our lower power supply just cannot generate enough power. We've replaced it, we've rebuilt it. There's probably a board issue there, but that is why Paperboy is not out on the Free Play floor right now. This is a beautiful Space Invaders. Uh, we, are, we have Space Invaders at every location right now. We just keep buying games. We love these games. Space Invaders in particular is one of my favorites, so uh, we have extras. Here's the Sunset Riders slash X-Men. What's really interesting is it has a Sunset Riders control panel overlay, an X-Men marquee, an X-Men plastic on top, but it's a Sunset Riders piece of wood underneath. As you can see, we have stolen all the original beautiful Wiko joysticks from here. Uh, and these are just generic Wiko push buttons that may or may not eventually get stolen. If I remember correctly, we've, we've stolen a ton of parts from this cabinet because it was kind of a hodgepodge, not really perfect, and a great parts cabinet that we have now uh, pulled. But it's sad too, because the, uh, the original note says works. So that is what's tough about this entire business is finding parts wherever you can. All right, so coming off of this Konami parts cabinet, we have a super rare, super amazing, fully working Atari fire truck. This is what an original fire truck manual looks like. This is this game is in amazing condition. Unfortunately, we found that the Atari black and white games from this era do not work well on free play. It's difficult to keep them credited for one. It's very, very difficult. We have plans for this cabinet. None of them involve free play, unfortunately. Um, and you'll see another cabinet that used to be on free play floor, uh, Night Driver nearby. Uh, but this is a beautiful Atari fire truck. This is a deluxe fire truck with both steering wheels with full sound. You, it's, it's amazing. It's right next to an old style working Qbert. Um, this needs to get to free play in as soon as we can get it. Next to a Sega Turbo, uh, to, or Turbo Outrun actually. Uh, also working, also amazing. Right behind it, a Taito Xerion. Rare, rare game. Amazing game. Uh, a shmup that we need to get out. And then right next to that, an Atari Night Driver. That's the Night Driver that used to be a Free Play Richardson. It had pretty good adoption, but honestly, we were killing ourselves keeping it on the floor. Um, and there were, you know, though it was popular, it wasn't popular enough to kind of uh, support the amount of work that went into it. So both the Night Driver and the Fire Truck, we have plans for, and they involve quarters. So hopefully soon we figure that out. All right, so we, we just keep talking, and it's so hard for me to do this because I love all of these games so much, but this is a white Nintendo Radar Scope cocktail. Amazing. On top of it is the original Laserdisc from a Dragon's Lair 2. Um, it still works, but we're tweaking it ever so slightly. Next to it, uh, and this is, this is a game that, like, it's so hard for an arcade to have it out, but we've been trying for a while. Mousetrap, um, and check it out. It's an XD game. The control scheme is absurd for a retro arcade. I mean, for any arcade, really. And it just is, is beautiful. We don't have it out yet, but it's on our list. Uh, which is right beside the Caveman Ninja with the worst control scheme that has ever existed. Joystick on top, buttons below. They're all duplicated. It's terrible, but Caveman Ninja needs to come to free play soon. Um, and this is one of our probably bigger shames. Every Confidential Mission, Confidential Mission is one of my favorite Sega shooters. Um, but at this point, every Confidential Mission is serving as a kind of host for a bunch of really expensive, really awesome parts. Uh, gun casings, gun sensors, gun sensors on the, the original thing. And we, you'll find probably five or six of these in our collection. Um, I still keep one of them working, but this is probably the best place to harvest Guns, for example, Lost World, um, and the Virtual Cops. Lots of really, really good games. This is a four-slot Neo Geo uh, that used to be out. It's working, but we need to do a little bit of work to get it back out. This one's probably one of the closest in the entire room. All right, so this is a super rare, really, really cool game that has not yet made it to free place floor. It's an Orca Espial uh, using all the original parts. We have a minor sound issue we've been working on. I mean. I hope this comes out soon because it's an actual dedicated SPL. I've never seen any other one but this one, uh, and it's great. Then we've got like a, a weird kind of makeshift Frogger cocktail. I'm sure we haven't even looked at it. Here's a game that has been requested. We don't have it out yet, Kung Fu Master. Kind of a goofy game. 
kangaroo, which has been out on the floor before. I don't know if it's this one or another one. Um, also made famous by our game of the week, which you can click on the top right corner for uh, Gravatar. Um, kangaroo was just derided internally at Atari, but we used to have it out. It's a pretty cool game. Uh, Play Choice 10, we've got them out at all locations. Tapper, Escape from the Planet of the Robot Monsters that did not beat the other Escape or the other Escape we have. We have four or five of them actually. Uh, but we have one out at Didn't now. That's great. Another Sunset Rider still has the Konami joysticks, the uh, the Wiko joysticks. So um, I believe this one is fully working. We just had it out at a show. Uh, right over here, we when we say we're distributors of just water, that's what we mean. We get huge shipments all the time. Uh, and I mean, it's really, really good water. So we're really proud of it. A Super Neo 29 fully working. I mean, that. It's amazing because we've looked at a ton of really rare stuff, but that might be the rarest of everything in here. Um, Tournament Arkanoid, this used to be on the Free Play Richardson floor. It has lost its spinner and its monitor um, to another Arkanoid. It's just project stuff. This is a Miss Pack that I bought because it's the most beautiful Miss Pack I've ever seen playing, but the cabinet was terrible. It used to have weird side art. Um, still has some controls and everything, but it's lost its monitor and its board. Um, and then we have random stuff here, monitor chassis. It's you'll you've probably seen me just walk by stuff. And then boom, right here, four player cocktail warlords. Crazy rare. This is the same one that was at the free play Richardson floor. We almost have it back. It, but it's all about if our games stay together that are on location right now for a week or two, we can get a ton of games back. But that's what we've been struggling against. Um, this is probably my favorite cocktail game. One of my favorite four-player games, too, and it's been killing me that we don't have it on the floor right now. Uh, this is another... You're only seeing the backs of them. This is 720 again. Uh, a lot of people have said, you know, we don't think Freeplay... For whatever reason, we don't think Freeplay has 720s. This is the second one in this room. They all work. They're all just not perfect. And when we bring a game to the floor, we want it to be perfect for you guys. Uh, this is our... This was supposed to be Arlington's Lucky and Wild Cabinet. This is the variant that looks even goofier than the American version. Um, we've ended up stripping a lot of parts from here uh, and keeping the Lucky and Wild that's on the richest floor right now on the floor has required almost everything you see here. There's no more guns, we've lost the floor. It's been difficult, but you know, uh, it's how it goes. Uh, making sure we have one good Lucky and Wild is more important than having two broken Lucky and Wilds. Uh, we talked about War Final Assault earlier. There's another one. Dragon's Lair 2. This is what the lights just came out of. This is a dedicated uh, Dragon's Lair 2. This was at Arlington for a long while. It started having problems. We fixed it a bunch of times. To be honest, Arlington's about to get a Dragon's Lair 1 with the original laser disc. So I think most people would pick that over Dragon's Lair 2. Quartet. Amazing Sega game. We just haven't had enough time to work on it yet. This is a relatively recent uh, purchase that's come in. Four players, really cool cabinet, really great game. Uh, just, you know, I mean, we have a lot of cool stuff. We have to keep working on a parts blast city, some game boards down there, Tekkens and whatnot. A parts Astro City, also really cool. Uh, Karate Champ right here. This is gonna, this is another game you're gonna see a few times during the walkthrough. I promise we want to get Karate Champ to the floor. It's been a priority, but there's so many good games in the world. Um, so yeah, this is Diddy's Karate Champ. One of the first fighting games, one of the very early fighting games, and it's just great. Uh, this is the Rush of the Rock. I believe that was at Arlington. We're redoing it. Rush of the Rock is actually an internal like staff favorite, so we're really working hard. You're about to see another Rush of the Rock when we go next door to the other part of the Secret Lab. And this is actually a really sad story. Killer Instinct 2. Broke its strap in the truck, broke through all of its uh, pieces that were holding it together, and kind of destroyed itself. We still are uh, working on bringing it back. Still has a great monitor, great PCB, but the cabinet, as you can tell, just about killed itself. So, uh, if you've ever been wondering why we only have Killer Instinct One, we haven't brought our Killer Instinct Two out back yet. This is here. We also just had so many awesome games. All right, so. That is our walkthrough for the uh, Free Play Lab number one. We're about to walk next door. We're gonna go to their next site. It's gonna have a lot of cool games, a lot of newer stuff, um, and a lot of stuff that I'm gonna have to apologize is not on the floor yet, but we're gonna walk over there. Give us a few minutes. We'll be over there. Check the next video. It's over next door.